Hi guys. So I'm going to be starting on step four on the page assembly instructions, assuming that you've already uh, done all the prep work. So we're going to glue the pattern um, page to the inside of one of the covers. So for this, anytime you use um, regular re regular stock paper, um, I think the uh, glue stick works great. Um, I've noticed that if you use the more liquid glues, um, the paper just gets much more crinkly. I only like to use the heavier glues when um, we're you know, dealing with cardstock. But with regular paper like this, I think the glue stick works great. And I like the purple, the kind that tints purple so you can see exactly where you've put it. Once it starts drying, it dries clear. Um, not that it would really matter because you're not going to see it anyway. But, and I always like to get a scrap piece of paper underneath so I can get right to the edges without ruining my table. So, <clears throat> now we will glue this right in the middle of the front or the inside cover. And you notice that I, I rounded, I used a round punch corner punch on the, the pattern paper. I just kind of like the way that looks, but you could definitely leave it square as well. And just be sure to um, work from the, from the top down to prevent any sort of bubbles. I like to kind of work from the middle and top as well. I'll show you later, a little bit later too, but kind of spread things out from the middle because you don't want any bubbles popping up in the in the middle of that page so that is done all right so now i'm going to do the same thing with the pocket the inside cover pocket have those two pieces of paper cut out and inked and i will once again use the lovely glue stick Get Get it nice and sticky. And I've noticed that some glue sticks aren't as powerful or sticky as some of the others. I kind of ran into a kind of a, a wussy, wimpy glue stick the other day. It came in a pack. I think it was the same brand that I'm using here. But every time I use it on something, it would just kind of dry up and fall off. So I don't know, I guess I just got a bad batch there. But this glue stick in particular seems to be working well for me. So we just want to, again, <clears throat> get that nice and centered on the pocket itself. Kind of adjust it, move it down. And I don't think that's going to work, so I need to moving quickly before it dries completely get it get a little bit more careful with it get it right in the center i'm a bit of a stickler for things being centered so anyway again smoothing things out from the middle like that using my bone folder to really get a good even flat pressure on it and there we have it now that is nice and glued down. So now it is time to make the pocket. So we'll bring the bigger piece and pick a side that um, they're going to work with. I'm gluing it on the left for this instance. You'll also need to glue one on the right. Um, on a different, when you do this again, you glue the other pocket on the right the next time. But this time I'm gluing it on the left side. This will actually be the inside of the back cover. Make sure that glue stick doesn't dry out. And I've made a little clue for me there. I put the folding bone on that one side so that I don't lose track of where I am and glue, glue that side because we want one side to be glue free. 
and um, I use a brush. Actually, I need to get a scrap piece of paper under there. So I did a, a thin bead of glue on the three sides, and I use a little brush just to kind of spread it out and flatten it a little bit, because if you get too much glue, then it's going to squish out the sides and make things really messy. You do want to get it to the edges, but you don't want it to get too, too gloopy. So just using a brush, flatten things out, take it to the edge as much as you can. Getting those corners are, is pretty important. So you want them lifting up later on, lifting up and falling off and peeling off. So just kind of take your time with it. Make sure you get it, get it the way you need it. And then pick uh, whichever edge you're going to um, glue it to. Make sure that um, whether it's the top or the bottom edge, you make sure it is very, very um, level and even with it. There's nothing hanging over. It's very possible that there will be a hang over on the bottom, but that's okay. You don't want hangovers everywhere. If you are very careful and get, get it very even on, say, the top and the side, then you know you're in, you're in good shape. And if there's anything overhanging on the bottom, then after everything dries, you can trim that off fairly easy. Uh, but that'll just be one spot that you need to trim off, not several pieces, but right underneath there. Make sure all the glue, uh, any excess glue that's oozed out, you kind of wipe that off a little bit. And then that is the the uh, inside uh, inside pocket for the back cover, and I already made the other one, so that was um, that's the inside cover for the front cover. So those are both done, and we will set those both aside while we get our things ready for the next step. Okay, now we are ready to start making our recipe page base. You can see the little lines there I have as a guide and the little pockets we've cut out and inked the edges already. So what I like to do is kind of lay out the pockets the way I'm going to want them uh, to be once I glue them down. Um, you don't want them all to stack up the same and be identical so i kind of like to turn the there's two there's two options basically and if you turn them um you've got really four different looks that will be peeking out um because only the very top will show but kind of you know vary it so that the lines don't all just you know match up completely so it looks a little more natural like natural wood i think i think it looks better that way so so I'm, uh, you only want to glue three of the edges, of course, so you can make a pocket. So I kind of put a little, um, put my bone folder there to, to remind myself, don't put the glue on that side. So put a, a thin bead of glue on the three sides, two short sides and one long side. And then take a brush and kind of flatten that bead a little bit and um, take the glue out to the edges. Um, you want to get it out to the edges, but you don't want so much glue out there that it's going to squish off, squish out the sides when you, when you press it down. A little bit is okay, but you just don't want just a bunch of glue squishing out because that makes things a little bit messy and it just makes it harder to work with. Um, so just do a, a thin little strip there. You want to be careful not to have the glue be too wide because, um, well, let me show you here the little guides. Just line the bottom of the pocket up right there. And then get the edges 
Uh, pick one edge and make it flush. Get it all nice and lined up. Um, but as I was saying, don't make sure that the glue, uh, when you put the glue on, it's not too wide because you want to make sure that the pocket is going to be big enough to put your little folders in. And I've designed it so that there is, there's enough room for them to slide in and out easily. But if you get a little bit too excited with your glue and you make it and uh, make that, that strip, um, too wide, then your, your pocket area is going to be not quite big enough for your, um, little folders to slide into. So anyway, we're just going to continue doing this five times and um, that will give you your completed recipe page base. And I'm going to speed this part up because um, it's not as fun to watch as it is to do. <laughs> so I'm going to speed this part up so that you don't have to be bored, I guess. <laughs> But you just continue doing that, starting from the top, and work your way down until you've made all five pockets. So once you've got all that finished, then kind of take a look at the other edge where you didn't have everything flush and you'll see there's will be a few things kind of hanging over. Um, so I like to kind of trim that. If that doesn't bother you, then you don't need to, you don't need to bother with that. But um, let that dry and then you can trim it uh, once that's dry, if you, if you feel the need. I am a little bit of a perfectionist, so those little spots hanging over bother me. <laughs> so I'm going to take my scissors and just carefully just trim that off a little bit. It's easier to see when you when you turn it over. Um, so you're looking at it from the back. Um, and just, you know, just be careful so you don't cut, cut too much either. But um, it's just up to you. And then once you've um, cut everything, all the overhanging edges, um, it's very possible that you've cut away some of the inked edges. So once you uh, do that, take a look, and it looks like I need to re-ink some of the, the edges there. So I'm just going to just do that real quick <clears throat> so it has a finished look again. And, you know, another opportunity to ink is always fun for me. <laughs> so. Here, um, I'm just going to show you um, how it all kind of fits together. Um, I've already cut the recipe cards out and have made the folders. I didn't didn't do a video clip on the making of the folders because I thought that was pretty self-explanatory. So um, I just I did those ahead of time just to save save some time. But um, you can see here how lovely it's going to look when it's finished. And you will notice that um, with the folders, I've got the five different patterns. Um, there's three blue and two green. So um, the way I like to kind of arrange it is with the blue on top and then a green one and then another blue one and then another green one. The green one's there. And then another blue one.
And that way there's a little bit of a a little bit of a rhythm to the patterns. <laughs> but you can do it however you would like to do it. And that's how it's gonna look when it's all done. And of course you write your recipe um names on the tabs there. And uh, that's that's gonna be what it looks like when it's finished. All right, so now we're going to cut off our binder strips. Um, you can see I've already cut one away because I already pre-made pre -made one. Um, but you just um, will print as many out of these as you need, and then you'll just cut as many as you need. And you will not need to worry about inking these edges because the edges are not going to show. But um, just cut them to the line, and it should be the same height as your page. So then what we will do, we're going to bind two of your uh, recipe base pages together. So what you want to do is leave about a quarter of an inch in between the two so that there's a little bit of uh, the design that shows. And that gives you a little bit of um, leeway when you're opening the, the book and turning the pages. So then um, just flip it over, uh, move that binder strip off to the side for a little bit, and um, just take your glue and glue the inner edges. And um, you're going to want to be a little bit more generous and um, have that have that glue be a little bit um, wider out so that the binder strip, um, all of the all of the, the binder strip is covered uh, with glue so that you don't have any edges um, just sticking up unglued because you don't want them to accidentally catch on something and rip off. We want this to be very, very sturdy book. So just take your brush and flatten that bead and bring it out a little bit wider than um, you have in the past. So that you have enough glue to cover the whole binder strip once you put that down. Uh, those corners really well. All right. So now we will take that binder strip and place it over the two. Make sure that your that gap is about a quarter of an inch. Just carefully place that on there. Um, try to keep the the edge, the top and bottom edge. Um, you know flush with with your pages make uh, make sure it's nice and firm and before you really press down kind of flip it over so you can see exactly um, what we'll be showing you can while the glue is still wet you can you know adjust it a little bit if you need to just kind of place it where you think it looks best and so you can see I've made another one. And you just make as many of these as you will need for your, um, for your book. And that's completely up to you. I'll readjust a little bit more. And there we have it. And it looks like got a little corner there that needs a little bit more glue. So just kind of check for that sort of stuff. So after you've made your complete um, binder sets, binder, I mean, I'm sorry, pocket page, sets we're going to do um, a single one for the front 
and the back of the signature. So this time I'm just going to put the glue on the binder strip itself. And I'd say about, you know, one third of that strip will be, will be glued to the back of that pocket page. And you may uh, notice my wardrobe change. <laughs> it took me several days to make this tutorial um, because I kept getting interrupted with other daily duties. So um, you will see a wardrobe change every so often <laughs> where it's a completely different day. <laughs> but that's okay. You can take as long as you need to. You can do this all in one day or you can just take your time and make it over the course of a week. So. This will be on the front of the signature. And you just need one side of that binder strip glued down. And you will need that other, the loose end, you will need that, um, that will be going onto the cover itself. But you'll see, you'll see more about that later. Again, make sure everything is nice and flat and pressed down nice and firmly. and need to let that dry. Now, this is your one of your pocket page sets. And what we're going to do is glue the back of this one to the back of that one. And this is definitely where you're going to want to use your stronger glue. Do not use a glue stick on here because it just not, it's just not going to be strong enough. So, and this is a good place to be very generous with your glue. Make sure that you've got all of your, all of your paper covered. This is not the time to skimp because you want your pages to stick together well. Now, I will say, the glue that I'm using here is not the glue that I would recommend anymore. It is just a typical crafting glue. The Art Glitter brand, I have learned, is much better about not warping the paper. Because when the paper gets wet, even the cardstock, it kind of warps a little bit. Which in some cases isn't a terrible thing, but um, I think it's nice to have it as straight as possible. Um, for this, but um, it wasn't terrible warping, but next one I make, I'm going to try the other glue, and I've, I've heard wonderful things about it. So, but either way, whatever glue you use, um, be generous with it, and then use a, a wider brush. These sponge brushes work really well for this, um, and just get it spread out and um, nice and even, so there's not any heavy spots that are really heavy and some spots that are not. And again, you really want to get to those edges. Not so much that there's a bunch of glue squishing out, but enough where it's if those edges are going to be nice and tight, glued together nice and tight. So <clears throat> take your time with this again. Just get it nice and distributed. The glue is a little bit thick there, so I'm borrowing it, borrowing it to put on top. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And then we get to start to make things really happen here. It's easier to unfold it like that, and then you can really get those two, those two edges um, nice and flush. Again, I just concentrate on two edges, and you know the others I can always trim off. But if the two are are good and tight, then then you know um, you don't have to trim anything there. So while the glue is wet, again, you can kind of move things around a little bit. 
get it nice and tight. I like pinching the edges just because that's those are the edges that I want them to stay. Once I get it right and lined up, then I want them to stay like that. So I kind of pinch the edges tight and then slowly work my way through the center and over to the other edge. So there we have the first pages glued together. Now is a good time to make sure that there's that you did get the edges. It looks like I didn't quite quite get all the glue there that I should have. So now is a good time to check your edges and make sure that everything does have glue all the way to the edges. So everything is nice and tight. You don't want things peeling apart later. All right. So now you just continue gluing the pages back to back and you cut, you turn, um, you come out with the signature. And the only thing that I need to do now is to take my other single um single page and glue that uh binder strip and this time instead of gluing it on the left side we're gluing it on the right side and if you hear dogs barking in the background i'm sorry but that is my crazy crew <laughs> i have eight of my own dogs and they are a handful. I love them dearly, but sometimes it gets a little bit noisy. Even if in my studio here upstairs, um, I can still hear them going crazy. So if you hear dogs throughout this video, please uh, excuse them. They are my crazy children. So on this, we're just doing the same thing as we did originally. <clears throat> about one third of it getting glued onto the back of this single the last and final single pocket page get it lined up now I would recommend you know letting it letting it dry before you do much else with it but for the sake of time just going to go ahead and glue glue it straight on to the, the back of that signature and this is going to be the same the same thing that i did on the front and this is going to be our back a very very back page and I will go ahead and speed this up again so that you don't have to watch paint dry, <laughs> so to speak. And there you have it. Now I'm going to go ahead and place some heavy books, or I've got a binder and some file folders that are 
heavy, <laughs> pretty much anything that will just give it some pressure and um, let everything um, dry with some, some pressure on it so it dries a little bit flatter. Um, and honestly, I'd recommend doing this with every step. Um, you can see a little bit there, the pages were a little bit wavy, but anyway, now we are ready to get the signature, the spine of the signature bound. So I've got some um, sorry silk ribbon right here. It's a nice thin uh, material. You can use any kind of cloth that's thin like that as well. Any kind of scrap cloth. It doesn't matter what it looks like because you're not going to see it. Um, this just happens to be a very pretty, <laughs> pretty ribbon. Um, but I have a lot of it, so I thought I'd use it. I like the way, um, I like how thin it is. It's uh, a little bit thicker than than gauze. Um, clearly, you can't see through it, but uh, it's not a very thick. And you do want it more thin. It can be a, another type of ribbon if you have a thin ribbon, but you want something that's going to be able to kind of meld into the folds of your signature. Um, so just get it, be very generous with the glue here. Spread it out as much as you can. Um, it's a little trickier with fabric sometimes, it wants to move with you. But, and this ribbon is a little bit, uh, a little wrinkly, so having a little bit of a challenge getting it in the cracks there, but um, this really be okay. And it's, it's okay to have uh, a little bit of goopy, goopy glue this time. It doesn't have to be spread out thin and super even you just you, you do want to have glue everywhere but having some spots that are a little bit thicker is a-okay it's actually probably a good idea and again you want to get it to the edges as much as you can and that should be just about just about enough there for that ribbon Okay, so what I want to do is place that on top of the spine. But the best way to do that is I need to I need to prop it up because I only have two hands. <laughs> so I'm using a few things that I have on hand to prop it up so I don't have to worry about it falling over. I'm going to take my glue strip and glue side down, place it over that spine. And really, really set it on there, get it in there. Get it inside where all the all the folds were, you know, also all the way to the to the edges as well. This is going to make your book much stronger and much more durable um, than if you had just just the paper. The paper would be okay, but this is going to be a keepsake for you and your family. So you want it want it to last. So I think the fabric is a really great idea um, to make it more durable. And as you can see, I'm adding some more glue to the outside of this ribbon. Um, again, making it just that much stronger. Um, and you can just, you know, Put it on the brush, brush it on there a little bit more. Concentrating mostly on the, the very middle where the, where the folds are. And really use your brush to kind of really work it in there and, and press down pretty firmly on it. You don't have to be too, too gentle on this. You wanna really, really get it in there. And this, you are definitely going to have to let it dry for a while. So this might take a little bit longer to dry than the others. Um, but you do want this to be dry enough so it's not going to um, kind of get in the way of the rest of your steps if it's still kind of wet. 
I apologize for the glare there. My my lighting uh, was not ideal that evening. So we're just going to let that dry. All right, now it is time to make our cover, which is very exciting. So depending on how many um, pocket pages you made, uh, it's going to depend on how thick your spine will be, right? So I didn't make mine very thick. It's just a matter of six pages, um, six you know front front and back pages. So I'm just using the one inch um, spine. But as you can see there on the set, I've got all the way up to three inches, I believe, which would be a monster of a book, but it is definitely, definitely doable if that's what you want. But I'm just doing a little one. So again, inking the edges, because I just think everything looks fantastic when the edges are inked. So this will be my spine. Put those away, and then I will always make sure your ink is covered when you're done with it. You don't want it to dry out. That'd be very sad. So as you can see here, um, that is about the same width as my spine. It could be a little bit less. It could be a little bit, um, a little bit more narrow but I think that will work just fine. You can play with it a little bit and see what you think. Um, you don't want it to be too big or else, or else your binding will, will be sloppy. But as long as it's, it's you know, pretty close to the, the width of your spine, um, that should be just fine. So you can kind of see there, it's about the same width. I think I may trim it down just a little bit. Now that I've analyzed it a bit. All right, so I trimmed it down a little bit. Now, you can take um, another piece of material. Um, I, I had more sorry silk ribbon to use. And I love this color. Um, now, whatever cloth you use for this, you do want it to be something that you like because this part will be showing just a little bit, but it will be showing. So either um, you can take two pieces like I have here and just um, glue them on, on either side or get a piece of material that is wide enough to, to cover the spine and then also cover you know, overhang about an inch and a half um, on either side of that spine, on the back of that spine. But I happen to have this ribbon and I really love the color. So that's what I am using. Again, get that, get that uh, glue, be pretty generous with it here too. And I'm just going to Place it on one half there. And again, you do want to, um, if you have anything overhanging, that's fine. The material's easy enough to, to trim off, but you wanna make sure it's nice and flat. You don't want any wrinkles in it. Cause that'll, that'll affect things a little bit down the road. So definitely want to get it nice and straight. And the glue is going to, it's going to get a little bit messy, as you can see here. Um, something I did not do for the video was use wax paper. Um, I would recommend getting some wax paper, putting it on the bottom of the strip. Once you have it done like this, put it on the bottom underneath, and then also put another little sheet of wax paper on top. Because you can see it's, for some reason, it, it just, it's like the, the material um, is 
gooping past through the through the the, the glue is gooping past through the material. So um, I just put some more scrap piece of paper underneath. But I next time I would use wax paper, so it won't stick so much um, underneath and on top. And then place a book over top, a heavy book, so that it dries a little bit more flat. But I did not do that this time. So do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, once that's all dry, trim off the, you know, any excess material that you may have. And then it's time to glue on the covers, the front and back, whichever ones you chose flipped over in whatever direction you want and again we're going to leave just a little bit a little bit showing this time i would say maybe just an eighth of an inch you don't want to be too much so get that glue on there <clears throat> And again, be, be generous enough so that this is going to be sturdy, but not so generous that you're going to be um, getting really super wavy paper when you get it onto the cover. Brush it to the edges. Be careful not to get, not to get it uh, any glue towards the spine because that's the material that little eighth of an inch is going to be showing so you don't want glue to be peeking out from there if you can help it so just bring it off to the edges the outer edges and i've really found that those sponge brushes work really well for this and they're so cheap and they're disposable and if you forget to rinse off the glue off your brush it, it'll definitely ruin it but they're so cheap <laughs> that it's it's not you know not a huge loss if if the glue gets dried up and you can't use it anymore i'd hate to have that happen to an actual brush so then you just carefully place your cover on there leaving about an eighth of an inch um, this will give your book um, more room to bend and kind of breathe. And here you'll see me cheating a little bit. I got I got a little excited and I and I glued the front end, <laughs> uh, the front cover, the inside to the to the outside before I should have. I I got I got ahead of myself. So that's what you just saw there. But just ignore that. You're gonna you're not gonna have that yet. You're just gonna have the two outer edges. I mean the two outer covers. So you just glue them down like that. And definitely want to put some weight on there. Let that dry really good because this is your this is your cover. This is your binding. All right. Once that is done, you will glue that outer flap on your signature and again ignore what you see there on the left i like i had said i i got ahead of myself and i glued <laughs> i glued that inside front cover onto the to the outside front cover before i should have and i didn't want to rip it all apart so i just left it but pretend that's not there <laughs> Pretend that's not there, and it's just the back of that cover that you that you just saw. So we're I'm gonna carefully lift that up. I luckily hadn't glued it so well so that I couldn't lift the edge up. So you're just gonna glue that strap down. And this is gonna be interesting because uh that inside cover page is now kind of in my way. <laughs> but where there is a will, there is a way. So that's what we're going to do. And that, that, that's not working for me. Okay. I have to put a whole lot more glue on there because we're just being stubborn. 
And you will notice that once once you glued that fabric onto your binder strip like that, um, it actually does make it very, um, very hard and stiff, which is fine because that, that'll make it nice and strong. But it does make it a little bit more challenging to glue down. You definitely want to have enough glue there to, to stick it onto that, that um, the outer cover page. But <laughs> ignore my struggle. This is what happens when you get ahead of yourself. But you can see you can see what I'm trying to do there. So now this side will be much, much easier because I don't have that inside page glued on there yet. This is how it should go. But again, that um, that section of the binder strip is pretty stiff and, and hard. So we want to get enough glue on there so that first of all, it softens up a bit and then um, it'll really stick to your to your cover sheet there. So carefully place that in the whole time, keeping your signature propped up and upright like this. Um, it's a little bit of a little tricky to do a little bit with two hands, but um, you can see how I'm doing it. Just kind of keep it, keep it upright. Um, now it will be something that you definitely, definitely want to make sure that this dries really well before um before you do anything else so i'm going to put a little scrap piece of paper there so that because of the glue coming out the edges um i just really want to get it get it on there nice and firm and again i'm gonna i'm going to put some weight on there so it can it can dry with some weight on it and You can see there I'm still <laughs> still struggling a little bit. But once it's in place, it'll be on there. Nice, really nice. So I'm going to prop it up. Have it propped up. Now I'm ready to glue that inner cover page <laughs> where I have my my um, side pocket. And I'm being a little bit a little bit daring here, putting my glue on without putting it on the table. I've kind of run out of room, <laughs> so I'm trying to get my glue on without having to. Uh, take up more table space, but you see what I'm doing here. Get the glue on there, prop up that left side so that the right side is very nice and flat without anything pulling it. Um, more scrap paper to save my table and get those edges lined up nice and flush. Just make sure all, all of it is nice and flat with no bubbles anywhere. And again, put some weight on there and let it dry really well. And then, of course, you will do that to the front cover, which I had already done. I got ahead of myself. But once that's all dry, you can see now it is time to have fun with embellishments. So get your little embellishment papers and um, you can cut this. I, I happen to just love the look of torn, torn pages. And you can see if you pull it in one direction, you don't get a white edge. And when you pull it uh, the other direction, the other side has a white edge. So I always like to rip it so that the white edge is not, um, not showing. And so I'm pulling it down is what makes it um, 
or the white edge doesn't show. So I'm just going to start ripping out, uh, ripping around these cute little embellishments. And then um, and choose, kind of choose, you know, what you want to put where. Um, I think putting an embellishment on the, uh, the cover pocket is fun. And I'm going to be putting embellishments on the, on the bottom pocket of each page because there's plenty of room to do that. You could maybe even do two. You know, just feel free to do whatever you think looks good and have fun with it. But um, I'm just going to do a few here just to show you, just to give you an idea of what I mean. Get, get it in whatever shape. And what I like about ripping also, it doesn't have to be exact. The more, it looks a little bit more rustic, and I, I, I really like that look. So, get that propped up again just so I have a, a little bit flatter surface on that inner pocket. And then it's time to ink the edges again. Yay. And I just really love the way um, torn, torn edges look when they're inked. So that's just, that's just my personal preference. You might want to cut them in squares or in circles. You cut them in squares and then round the edges with a, a paper punch. Um, whatever you want to do. Totally fine. And since these embellishments are um, on regular stock paper, you can um, go back to your glue stick. I think the regular glue is going to be too, too wet and goopy. So grab that glue stick again and get it covered nice and thoroughly. Go to the edges. And then stick it where you want it. I think that one will look cute right there. And you just do that to all of your pages. And don't forget to embellish the, the cover inside pocket pages as well. There's just all sorts of possibilities. You can do whatever you want. So I'm not going to do it all right now just to save time, but you can see how many fun spaces you have that you can, you can embellish. Now, let's work on the cover embellishment. So you can choose one of those two designs. Um, I'm going to do the bottom. I really like that little wreath, wreath design. And again, I, I want to tear it so that the white edges do not show. 
um, the section that I would be using. You certainly could, especially if you're going to ink the edges. Um, it just makes the ink more pronounced, which is totally fine. It's just a whole nother look. Um, I just tend to like it a little bit more subtle, at least for this project. Other, other projects uh, sometimes call for more pronounced edging, but I'm just going to stick with my the subtle, subtle edging on this project. Just kind of keep tearing around and ripping it until you think it looks okay. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's what I love about ripping, ripping the edges. Um, I think that looks about right. We'll go ahead and ink, ink those edges. Sometimes I like to get a little bit extra. It's not just the edges, but kind of goes down into the design. You can kind of see there there's a little bit more heavier blotches um, further in. Um, sometimes it just happens accidentally, but I actually like the way it looks. It looks a little bit more, more natural, like that maybe the edges have been burnt a little bit. So you just go as heavy or as light as you like. I'm going to go a little bit heavier on some of the some of the sections here just to kind of even it out. Just use your best judgment on that. And then again, use your glue stick because this is just regular paper. Getting all the way to the edges. And since this is the cover, you definitely don't want any edges kind of sticking up and you know being able to catch on things and ripping off. So definitely make sure that this is this is going to be on there good and tight. Get nice and centered. Place it wherever you feel looks best to you. Get it nice and bubble free. And there you have it. A really fun keepsake for you and your family. Now, one little finishing touch is a little recipe conversion card that I put in there. So um, you can just cut that out and ink the edges as well. And I like to slide it into that first pocket on the, on the front cover. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put those recipe cards back into the little folders and put the folders back into the pockets so you can see how, how lovely it looks when it's all finished. And of course, you're going to want to do that to all of the rest of your pages, finish your embellishments and all the putting the folders in there. Don't forget you have another fun pocket back there. And I'm just going to take a quick look and see, make sure I don't have any stray. Got some stray string there from the ribbon and make sure all your edges are clean. But that's it, everyone. What a beautiful family heirloom you just created.